We are halfway through the course and it is time for us to have a midterm. But I am grateful that you're giving me the privilege of listening to what I have to say. So I will answer the questions myself. There are five questions in our quiz. What, why, how, does this work and should this work? The answer to the question of what is that this is a course on machine learning on graphs. The answer to the question of why is that graphs are generic models of signal structure and structure is the key to scalability in machine learning. Graphs are also models of distributed physical infrastructure such as wireless networks, power grids, collaborative systems, in which the graph is not only helpful but inherent. The answer to the question of how is that we use graph neural networks. Now does this work? Do GNNs work? Well, yes, we have worked out the solution to a couple of practical problems. We are going to study a couple more and we could study another dozen. But should this work? Should we expect GNNs to solve the problems they solve? Well, yes, we have offered theoretical explanations in the form of permutation equivariance and stability to the formations of the support. All of these answers are correct, but we can do better. Let us work together on a more detailed answer. Regarding the question of how, the first component of our answer is to introduce the notion of a graph signal, which we have used to great success as a model of several systems of practical importance. In a graph signal model, we use a graph as a generic descriptor of signal structure, with signal values associated to nodes and edges expressing similarity between components of the signal. These are therefore the three elements of a graph signal model, nodes that support signal components and edges that describe the respective proximity. If nodes are customers, signal values are ratings and edges are similarities, we have a description of a recommendation system. If nodes are transceivers, signals are quality of service requirements and edges are wireless channel strengths, we have a model of a wireless communication network. And if nodes are drones, signals are velocities, and edges are sensing and communication ranges, we have a model of an autonomous system. The second component of our answer to the question of how is to design graph convolutional filters, which we defined as polynomials on the shift operator S that utilize coefficients HK. The convolutional filter depends on the filter coefficients HK and on the shift operator S, the effect of these two parameters is somewhat separate, a fact we have exploited for transference and that is also crucial for analysis. A related notion is that of a graph convolution, which is the result of applying a graph filter to a graph signal. This is just a matrix vector multiplication, but it is also a weighted linear combination of elements of the diffusion sequence. We never compute graph filters. We compute graph convolutions because they are computationally more efficient. A graph convolution recursively applies three operations, shift, scale, and sum. We begin with the signal x, which is rebaptized here as the zeroth element of the diffusion sequence. We scale it by h0 and sum towards the output. We then multiply the signal x by the shift operator. We call this a shift, the result of which is the first element of the diffusion sequence. We scale it by h1 and sum it towards the output. We now apply the shift a second time. This produces element two of the diffusion sequence. We scale it by a two and sum towards the output. We shift a third time to produce element three of the diffusion sequence. We scale it by h three and sum it towards the output. Since this is a filter of order three, the summation of these four scaled and shifted elements of the diffusion sequence is the graph convolution of the filter H with the signal X instantiated on the graph S. The third piece to the answer to the question of how is where things start to get interesting. This is where we introduce a graph neural network, a GNN for short. A GNN with L layers is defined as the recursive composition of L perceptrons. This figure is an example with three layers. Each perceptron is itself the composition of a graph filter with a pointwise nonlinearity. The layer L perceptron takes as input the signal XL minus 1, which is the output of layer L minus 1. It computes the graph convolution with the layer L filter, which has coefficients HLK. The filter's output is passed to the pointwise nonlinearity sigma, 
to produce the layer L output XL. The output of the GNN is the output of the layer capital L, the last layer of the GNN, which is a function of the filter tensor H that groups all filter coefficients HLK and the shift operator S. As in the case of graph filters, the effect of these two parameters is somewhat separate, a fact that we also exploit for transference and that is also crucial for analysis. These GNNs with single features are interesting conceptual objects, but from a practical perspective, they are pretty useless. The ones we use in practice are GNNs with multiple features. They are the same, except that the filters at each layer are MIMO graph filters that take a collection of features as an input and output another collection of features. But other than that, it's the same architectures. We stack layers, each of which is the composition of a graph filter with a point-wise nonlinearity. The only modification is that the graph filters are MIMO graph filters. The rest of the processing architecture is the same. In particular, the output of the GNN is still the output of the capital L layer, which is a function of the filter tensor and the shift operator. We are not saying much about GNNs with multiple features in our lectures. This is because the conceptual difference between single feature and multiple feature GNNs are few but do not interpret the positive of mention as a statement of importance. GNNs with multiple features are the ones that are relevant in practice. In fact, the opposite is true of the labs. We barely mention GNNs with single features in them. We are interested in GNNs with single features only because they help us in understanding GNNs with multiple features. Let's close the how question with some observations. Graph neural networks are, first and foremost, minor variations of graph filters. We just add nonlinearities and compositions. If you want to understand a GNN, you need to understand graph filters. GNNs are transferable across different graphs. A trained GNN is a trained tensor. It can be instantiated in any graph we please. Of course, we want to transfer across graphs that we expect to be similar in some way or another. GNNs are generalizations of CNNs because we recover a CNN by particularizing to the line graph. And they are also particularizations of fully connected neural networks, as all neural networks are. This completes the answer to the question of how and leads to the more significant questions in the quiz. Does this work and should this work? Does this work? Do GNNs work? The answer is yes, we have worked out their application to recommendation systems and are working out their application to the allocation of resources in wireless communications. We will review the use of GNNs in recommendation systems in this midterm. And should this work? Should we expect GNNs to solve the problems they solve? Yes, we have offered two theoretical explanations. We have shown that graph filters and GNNs are permutation equivariant. This property allows them to leverage signal symmetries. It explains why graph filters outperform linear regression and why GNNs outperform fully connected neural networks. This is legit science, by the way. Our theory makes a prediction. This prediction is ratified experimentally. We have also shown that GNNs have a better stability versus discriminability trade-off relative to graph filters. This implies that GNNs are better than graph filters at leveraging quasi-symmetries and explains why GNNs outperform graph filters. This is also legit science. Our theory makes a prediction and this prediction is ratified experimentally. We will review permutation equivariance and stability properties of graph filters and GNNs in this midterm.